I'm Stuart McLaurin, president of the White House Historical Association, and I'm really excited about this podcast conversation that we're having here today. And we're in historic Decatur House, just across the street from the White House, and this is our headquarters base of operations. And I have three really great friends. We have wonderful partnerships with each of the organizations that they represent. We have Valerie Camillo, who is the Chief Revenue and Marketing Officer of the Washington Nationals Baseball Club. Margaret Talev, who's the Senior White House Correspondent for Bloomberg, a CNN political commentator. And in the context with us, in the partnership, she's the President of the White House Correspondents Association. Teresa Carlson is Vice President of the Worldwide Public Sector for Amazon. And then we have very dynamic partnership with them right now. And she's also the chair of our National Council on White House History, which is a whole different dimension of partnership that we may uh, touch on. But today I'd like to have a conversation with you and get your uh, take on what the partnership has been like, um, the values and benefits to your organization, and I'd like to share what we think are the values and benefits to ours as well. To begin, just tell us about your role in your organization, the mission of that organization as it relates to partnerships, and why is it important or valuable to partner with organizations like us? Valerie. Sure, so thanks for having us all. It's exciting, what a great space to be in. Um, I, don't, I don't get to do this in these sort of settings very often, so this is a delight. Uh, so I'm the Chief Revenue and Marketing Officer for the Washington Nationals, and in that role, I oversee all of the revenue of uh, the Nationals, which is pretty much everything a fan experiences when they walk into the park. Uh, the food and beverage experience, the retail experience, the ticketing, all of our corporate partnerships, our broadcasting, licensing, the full gamut, and then all of the marketing to support that. The mission of the Washington Nationals is, is twofold. First and foremost is to win a championship for the city of Washington, Virginia, and Maryland, um, which you know, is such a way to connect the community, and, and that's really our second, our second goal, is that we want to be good stewards in the community. We want to create um, an environment where fans can come together and have a delightful experience that connects people across party lines, across different opinion sets, um, and, and really becomes a place where, where people can go back to you know, uh, nostalgic time, create wonderful memories with their friends and family, um, and in that way help uplift uh, the DMV. Mm -hmm. All right, Teresa. Yeah, thank you again. I agree. It's, this is a, it's a magical place to be here. Um, so I run worldwide public sector for Amazon Web Services, and if you've ever heard of cloud computing, that's our division of Amazon. And Amazon, one of the things in the public sector space that we've always talked about is paving the way for disruptive innovation and making the world a better place. So, for us, when it comes to working with the White House Historical Association. I think uh, both of those things that we're doing together, which is really trying to disrupt sort of the, the model that has been and then making the world a better place by hopefully bringing uh, the information from here out into the world. And Margaret, we have a really different relationship with the White House Correspondents Association in that you represent an array of uh, correspondents that have, some have been there a long time and may be familiar with who we are and what we can offer and some are very new but from your vantage point as president of that important group, talk a little bit about how this partnership is interesting and valuable to your members. Well, for the Correspondents Association, for the WHCA, um, our relationship with the White House Historical Association is huge because, of course, a lot of our interests and purpose uh, intersects. I represent um, hundreds of uh, journalists, uh, print, TV, radio, photographers, online, wire services who cover the White House day in and day out. And part of our mission is to um, help ensure um, as much access as possible for our members to the president, uh, top aides, um, physical access to events at the White House. Uh, but another big part of our mission is to educate the public, sure. um, whether it's other journalists, whether it's school children, whether it's just Americans who um, are interested in what happens at the White House and in what their government is doing. And of course, um, Today's news is tomorrow's history, and so that's kind of where our interests meet. My workspace at the White House, and I'm really privileged to have one, uh, is like a small cubby in the basement, and <laughs> when it rains, some water seeps underneath through those French drains, and it gets a little 
musty, and then some guy from GSA comes through with a fan and blows it into the air, and we have mouse traps, and it's all fabulous. But this is a completely different space, even though it's just a couple hundred feet away. It's soaring ceilings, beautiful friezes on the walls and ceilings, uh, and so much history here. So when we join up forces, uh, I think what we bring to you is people who are kind of the ground forces covering the current presidency, whoever it is, and, and what we get out of your um, members, panelists, board, all of that is just this breadth of knowledge, whether it's former press secretaries, uh, whether it's um, philanthropists, whether it is longtime journalists, whether it's historians, uh, archivists, uh, and just the tremendous resources that um, your association offers us in terms of history and context. We had a wonderful experience uh, last year where we invited newly appointed White House correspondents from the various organizations and brought them here and we had a breakfast meeting and shared with them some of our assets and resources like the digital library that Amazon has funded for us and made possible where we have an ama a treasure trove, tens of thousands of images, many of which have never been seen publicly before, and to share with these newly credentialed White House correspondents the access they could have to those images through the digital library, connect them with our historians so that they have a go-to person if they want to find out how many state dinners there have been for a country or when was the last time this was served at a state dinner or even on uh, some policy matters, when was the last time this was uh, discussed or proposed by a certain administration. So that's a wonderful relationship uh, that we have. I tend to say that we are content rich but reach challenged and a way that we extend our reach and impact and influence is through partnerships like we have here and you represent organizations that are dynamic in this community and across the nation and influenced around the world and that allows us to have that impact so that's how I see our relationship with you but what is it about your relationship with us that is fresh and interesting and maybe Teresa different than a partnership you would have with another nonprofit even I, I love your concept of sort of reach you have a lot of content but you really need to stretch the reach and I think for us we value uh, deeply our public private partnerships and the White House Historical Association falls into that public private partnership we have many partnerships but we have a select few that we're working with in areas right now where, again, we think we can disrupt something to make the world a better place and touch millions of lives. And when it comes to reach, we, will, we are working together to utilize technology in a way that actually drives and delivers that into schools, educators, uh, individuals, adults, all, all people who want to be able to experience the White House that haven't been able to do that today. But the important part is just that we can reach millions of people to, together through technology enablement. Uh, Valerie, we've had enjoyed a wonderful three-year partnership with the Washington Nationals where our content is shown at every home game, 81 plus home games a year with an interactive multiple choice quiz on White House history. And I, I love seeing those come up on the video screen and the little kids are taking pictures of it and texting it's with their friends. It's a fan favorite. And so, you know, we started that partnership with the goal of exposing the White House Christmas ornament every year. But in addition to those ornament sales, we reached so many eyes and really saturated the leadership sector of this community Tell us how you see that. What did you see as the benefit, the uniqueness, the freshness to the Nationals as a partner to you guys? Well, first and foremost, I think it was such an authentic relationship. You know, we, we talk a lot in uh, sports sponsorship about when you're partnering with a corporate partner, find the sponsor in the game so that there's an authentic reason for the brands to be connected and the stories that you're telling. And the goal at the end of the day is to create something to tell a story that enhances the fan experience in the park, um, you know, enhances the game entertainment, enhances what they're experiencing when they're sitting in that seat. And you know, that's the challenge in every partner that we have, but with a partner like the White House Historical Association, it wasn't a particular stretch to, to find ways to create an authentic and fun connection um, and tell these fascinating stories through the history challenge, through the mascots that we had, uh, that we integrated into our racing president's race. 
And f for us, I, you know, I think that it was so natural to find you guys in, in what we did, you know, through the, through the racing presidents first to start um, and through the history stories that we, that we told. And it was just, you know, the fans gave us the feedback that it was a different partnership, that they recognized that there was an education component to it, that there was a delight in, you know, having this new element with the, with the racing presidents. Um, and so I think it really raised our game. Well, we started uh, featuring the ornament, and each ornament that we do every year honors a different president sequentially. And so we had the challenge of uh, good old Calvin Coolidge and Herbert Hoover, and what would we do to tell the stories about their years in the White House? And so we took the concept of the racing presidents with the Washington Nationals, and we had racing Cal, and we had racing Herbie, and we were able to unpack the stories of their presidencies and their years in the White House through those racing presidents. We even took them to the White House. We had a wonderful experience right. in the diplomatic reception room filming uh, an opening film, I believe. Yes, yeah, an introduction for when the, that's shown every game when the racing presidents uh, took the field for their race. And I think you know, one of the things that delighted me about that is that um, the stories of those two presidents, there was a ton of children around Nationals Park that knew Cal, that knew these stories, that knew, knew Herbie. Um, and that's refreshing. And it's just, a, you know, the, we were making an impact in a positive way. So, Teresa, when you, you mentioned thousands of partnerships that you have, do you look for something in a partner that would bring value to Amazon as well, other than the value that you can give? to that particular partner? Absolutely. Um, we want to make sure that our partnerships match up for both of us. Uh, it's important, right? Because if only one is getting value, it's not really going to be a true partnership. Mm -hmm. um, but what we look for, again, is that really nice opportunity to look at mission, uh, especially when it comes to the public-private partnership. What's the mission that they have? What's the mission that we have? But not just that, the technology that we're delivering, can it really improve the experience, the customer experience? For you, it's the vast array of archives and information that you have on the White House and all the presidents and first ladies and just everything around it. So I think that goes really well together. But then the second thing that you and I spent, I think, a lot of time talking about was, how can we make that more real? Right. Because in a digital age, um, you can't just be satisfied with the status quo, right? My dad always said, if you always do what you always did, you always get what you always got. So we're trying to get something different here, which is that experience for everyone. And I think what we're doing with the technology, and again, we're just starting. There's so much more we can do. Uh, but it will really evolve into letting each and every individual have their personalized experience in going to the White House, and just even a walk through the city and around the White House here, whether you're actually here, whether you're in the White House, or whether you're at a school with a bunch of other students where you can have that discussion with your teacher. Well, Margaret, you'll be interested in this. One of the partnership elements with Amazon is this spring we're rolling out a new app for a White House tour. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Kennedy challenged us to print the first guidebook for the White House in 1962, and we've continued to update that wonderful paperback book, and we've sold millions of those. But in today's time, uh, there's an expectation that you can experience things through a digital lens and learn more dimensions of information uh, through what you're seeing. These are unguided tours of the White House. It's a real privilege that about 500,000 people have the opportunity to go through the White House on a tour each year. And that's uh, not common in homes of heads of state around the world. So. We're a real advocate for people having that up close and personal experience, but this app that we're developing with Amazon will really open it up in ways, and as Teresa said, it will interpret the White House to those who are going through the house. There'll be a component of it that if you can't get in the house, but you're in the, the park, the President's Park or around, that you can look at it and learn about it. Or if you're in Nebraska or in Poland, you can still learn about it remotely, and uh, there's, a, there's some gamification on it. You'll be able to uh, take a selfie on this app, and it uh, analyzes your image against the presidential portraits and first ladies' portraits that we have, and gives you this percentage of likeness so that you'll come up 72% Jackie Kennedy or whatever oh, nice. it is. <laughs> so that's fun. And so, Margaret, from your perspective, and I'm sure that from the day, from day one when our White House correspondent 
gets that badge and enters those gates and sits down in the briefing room, they're on a hamster wheel. Do they take time to learn and understand and appreciate the surroundings around them and those that have gone before and how can we help and to learn the lessons from them about their perspective on the White House? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the great privileges of covering the White House is getting to know some of the other journalists who have covered the White House for even longer. And I remember uh, the first time I got to fly on Air Force One it was also the first time that President Obama got to fly on Air Force One. So that was a, you know, it was a slightly different experience, I'm sure, for him. But, um, <laughs> but as I walked out to the tarmac, I was walking out with um, Don Gagne from NPR, who'd been on the White House beat for a long time. And I was kind of giddy and nervous. Like, oh, it was my first time on the plane. And he was just such a calming influence. He said, oh, I remember my first flight. Everybody remembers their first flight. And he told me all about his. And he was kind of my Sherpa as we went up the back stairs of that plane. And he showed me where the bathroom was and where my seat was and how, basically how to behave, right? And um, I kind of got to pass that on also. I made it a point whenever I'm traveling with a new correspondent to make sure they get their picture out in front of the plane, that they feel comfortable, that they know where they're doing. So much of our tradition is, is passed down. And, and some of it's in writing, and some of it's sort of oral tradition. And um, between Don Gagne's experience and mine is just the blink of an eye compared to a couple hundred years of history. So I'm always reminded whenever there is a state dinner or some sort of event where I make a special point to check with the Historical Association, I'm always reminded, even after 10 years of doing this, about how little I know and how much there is uh, to know. And I would say that, um, you know, as an association, everything we do is built on partnerships, whether it's the partnerships with our individual members and the news organizations they work for, uh, whether it's our relationship with groups like you, whether it's our relationship with other journalism advocacy groups. Um, it, the whole point is to leverage your resources to help people with common interests and tap their resources you know, to help you. Whenever I meet a new reporter who's new to the beat, I always recommend that they get to know you, your shop, your people, uh, whether it's just checking with the website or coming over here for an event uh, that you do because you really just open the door and like history is flooding out at you, right? And you realize how much there is to know and knowing more helps you be a better journalist, helps you to tell richer, fuller stories with that context. We've all mentioned the word education, and I think that is uh, very important and vital to us. And even the Washington Nationals, I don't think the public realizes the education work that you do in, in this community and that we helped in some small measure with. I like to feel like that everyone who has seen one of those interactive quizzes that may have just piqued their interest of a student or reminded an adult that, hey, I'm going to read that biography on the president or the White House. So tell us a little bit about the Nationals' education uh, mission and how you undertake that. I will say that the quiz was hard, and that was the best part about it. <laughs> well, Dusty it. Baker told me he would take it every game. Yeah. I said, Didn't, shouldn't you have been managing the team? But he would watch every game and try to answer it. I think that made, made it better because I, it really engaged the audience. It wasn't these gimme, you know, easy questions. People really engaged. They challenged oh, each other. God. Right, yeah. right. It was, and you know, for a lot of the people in, that, in, in the park on a given night know their DC history. So to make it hard for them, I think, is a, was a good challenge. Um, education is one of the, the three core pillars of our community relation platform. And um, we, we engage it in a number of different ways by partnering with institutions that have great content that can help to educate mm -hmm. our fan base in fun and entertaining ways, which I think you guys were a you know, preeminent example of. Um, but also, you know, we do, we do grass level, you know, ground level work in the community in, in, in the space of, of education. We partner with the DC Public Libraries on a reading program where the players get directly involved mm -hmm. and they go into the community and um, encourage uh, reading education. Um, we also have the Youth Baseball Academy um, which is a lot of people think is an academy to teach you know, young people how to play baseball. It's nothing of the kind. It's a life skills academy, it's an extension of the DC public school system that focuses on uh, engaging uh, youth, um, um, in some cases high risk youth, in uh, learning all sorts of different skills. And yes, the context of baseball is, like an, is certainly the wrap in which those stories and, and that learning is told. Um, but it, but it's, much, it's much more than that. It's, it's healthy lifestyles, it's um, you know, tutoring programs, after school mentoring, it's physical fitness, it's a full lifestyle uh, education experience. And so it is important to us because 
you know, we're certainly a family-friendly product. We certainly have a lot of children that are engaged around what we do. And if we can have an influence in that way and further education, then I think we're doing more than just winning ball games. We also had another uh, component of our relationship called White House at Bat, where we took um, uh, the partnership with the Nationals and we went into middle schools and high schools all over Northern Virginia, D.C., and Maryland, and we presented an opportunity for them to do a leadership lesson on one of the presidents represented in the racing presidents of the Nationals. And they did that in the form of storyboards of what they would do if they were creating a video for the, the Centerfield Video Board. And then we judged those, that we had entries from all over the metropolitan area, and we judged those. And then we worked with the videographers at the Nationals to actually create these videos of the winning students. And then they and their families and teachers came to the ballpark and were introduced and they could see their video and those are archived on our website as part of our educational materials. But just another way that we could reach out together in an education uh, space. So help us, uh, what are some ideas that someone listening uh, could take away from our partnership or some ideas or lessons that they may do if they're a presidential library in Texas or if they're a presidential birthplace in Illinois we're actually convening all of them here in Washington in August with 200 sites, birthplaces, childhood homes, libraries, and bringing them to Washington. It's called Back to the White House. The only thing these 45 guys have in common is they spent time in that house across the street or in George Washington's case, uh, had it built. But it's, we're not, well, sometimes we think we know it all here in Washington, but what little bit can we share in way of encouragement or insight or tools or resources to help sites that are scattered across our country? Well, one of the areas that we're trying to do with the White House uh, Council on History is we started this group, which I'm really proud of the board that we've convened. Uh, we're trying to get individuals from all 50 states involved in this advisory group. For us, I think it's about getting individuals involved in every state having the ability for them to give us the feedback on what we're doing and get involved and then participate at that state level, whether they have a library or a national monument in that state. Um, and another way I think that they'll be able to do that are through the schools and the educators themselves. And as we roll this out and we begin to get um, more students involved, more educators involved, I do feel like we're gonna get more feedback. I have shared with my team and uh, Stuart in the past, you know, I'm from Kentucky and as a young girl from Kentucky, I never dreamed I would get to go to the White House. I mean, I just, you know, you think about it, but you don't really believe you'll ever get the opportunity to go to the White House. And now I've been very blessed and honored that I've been in the White House many times. And what we said is this experience, we should make sure every student has the ability to either truly go to the White House and do that tour right. or have that virtual ability to go through the White House. And it's pretty exciting to me. And I think that's how we're gonna be able to get engagement and get feedback as we begin. To, and, and this is very doable. Like it, technology will allow us to do this in a pretty rapid manner. We just gotta find those right people. So if you're listening to this podcast and you wanna get involved, come and join us, right? That's right, uh, we, exactly. We wanna cast a very wide net you know, we talked about 500,000 people roughly get the opportunity to go through the house, which is just a tiny percentage of the people in the world. Margaret, every day in your work with Bloomberg and the White House Correspondents Association, you're the portal through which so many people in our country and around the world know what's going on there, uh, understand what's going on there, and as you travel with the president around the globe, you bring that information back to us but we see our reach beyond our own shores. And so uh, one of the things we're doing this year is we're, we publish books as part of our education mission. We're publishing a book on homes of heads of state around the world. So the White House will be there. Uh, and we've got a, right at 55 now, and this will come out in the fall. You asked uh, what thoughts we have on outreach and as both as a reporter and as uh, the president of the association this year, um, both reaching out and being receptive to other people's outreach are two of the most important things. So I will take my own advice and say for anyone who's listening, uh, we have we started out with a handful of scholarships. Uh, we have now expanded to scholarships with universities in 10 different states. 
Uh, I hope one day we will be at 50 states so that any student anywhere in America who wants to um, learn how to become a White House correspondent can have a, some help with their tuition to do that and can have a pipeline to us and to our members, our correspondents. Um, we have really been branching out in terms of our partnerships, both with other journalism groups and with universities with whom we have scholarship partners. Partnerships are incredibly important to being able to uh, maximize your reach and also what you can do with that reach. And so I would say um, for anyone listening who thinks I, they'd like to have their students get to know White House correspondents, I hope you'll reach out to us. Uh, we want to be as available as possible to the public. That's wonderful. Thank you for offering that and suggesting that. We too have a scholarship program, a scholarship that we fund in the name of Hugh Seide, former White House correspondents of long, correspondent of long standing and leader of our association, and it's at uh, Iowa State University, Hugh Seide's alma mater, and we bring this student to Washington every year, and we have a wonderful, we have a collaboration <laughs> with the Correspondents Association where this uh, student can spend time with people who are really practicing in the field, people they see on television all day, every day, and they have this opportunity to engage and further their own uh, career interests, so that's uh, really wonderful, and maybe we'll be able to attract students in, in other fields as well. Uh, education, teaching and telling the stories of White House history going back to 1792 when George Washington first selected that site across the street is so vital uh, to our mission and it's through partnerships like we have with each of you that uh, help make this uh, possible. So to wrap it up today and bring our conversation around this table to a close, although we will continue engaged with each of you in some different way, uh, tell us uh, just a, a word of, of something that you have learned or enjoyed or appreciated about the dynamic of working with us and that you might pass on to another organization uh, that, uh, to encourage them along the way. That partnerships and the vital, important, dynamic relationships like we have are really good for everyone involved and really help us all achieve our mission. Teresa? In terms of just how you think about the White House Historical Association and the outreach, what I have personally learned, and I've known you for a long time, Stuart, is that just the vast array of historical information available that I didn't even know was here. So I love, I think your gift shop here is one of the most amazing, probably in the world, in Washington, D.C. for sure. But every time I go in there, I feel like I learned something new and there's a new book I should buy, some, just some piece of history that I didn't know about. For us, again, it's about that reach, really being able to reach the number of people. So now we have the opportunity and we've opened the gates and we say at Amazon every day is day one. So I would say for us and this partnership, it's just day one. And being a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization and small, we're nimble. So we can react to opportunities yeah. like this. We are not dependent on any government funding at all. And so we're able to work and you mentioned public private partnerships earlier. Well, I think that the partnership that Mrs. Kennedy was visionary to begin in 1961 as a 32-year-old First Lady of the United States to create this public partner dynamic between the Historical Association and the White House that has benefited, we've been almost 50 million dollars we've been able to contribute back to the work of the White House amazing. in that time is pretty amazing and, and attributable think, to her vision. I don't think people, most people know that you don't take uh, funding Yes. That, that everything you do is from a philanthropic fundraising perspective. Most people have no clue about that, so that's another important and point for the And that's very important. Now. You know, our mission is the same regardless of who the President of the United States is, and Mrs. Kennedy wanted those who would follow her to have the same type of private resources and non-government funding that she needed at that time to keep the White House at that museum standard. Yeah. Valerie. Yeah. Um, my word of encouragement would be to the way that our partnership came together, um, and this harkens back to you know the folks who might be watching that are presidential libraries around the country or other institutions that that are similar in mission, is um, don't be afraid to to reach out and and tell your story. You have these wonderful you know stories, wonderful content. And we have three million people that come through Nationals Park each year, and the White House Historical Association has a story that fits right in 
to you know, what you guys are already doing and have you thought about this and would you be interested in a partnership? So my encouragement is to be proactive and, and uh, look out there at you know, who has great reach, who has a passionate customer base or fan base and find yourself in their story and make your pitch because I think um, the second we heard it, we were like, our fans will love that. That's yeah. going to raise our game. Let's figure out a way to do this. And we did. And it was a, you know, a wonderful three-year uh, relationship. Margaret. I mean, you've been a role model for our organization in many ways in terms of what's possible, creative thinking, thinking outside the box. For many years, the White House Correspondents Association was mostly kind of a behind-the-scenes organization that nobody really outside thought about except for if they watched the dinner on C-SPAN once a year. And um, I would say over the last couple of years, events have transpired that have made people much more interested in what we do day to day. And um, as we've taken on kind of a higher profile day to day, um, I look to groups like yours to see, um, to see that as an opportunity, not just a challenge. Uh, again, what we want to do is educate and connect with people. And when you have that chance, uh, it's important to be able to use it. Well, thank you very much. Four years ago, when I took on this wonderful privilege of a job, a leader here in Washington, that if I said this individual's name, you would all know this person, said to me, why do you want to work at that sleepy little house on the corner? <laughs> and thanks to the partnerships and the vitality that you have contributed through the Washington Nationals, the White House Correspondents Association, and Amazon Web Services, you have helped shake the dust off of this place. And we are having an impact and extending our reach in ways that I think a lot of people could not have dreamed of uh, four years ago or five years ago. So thank you very much. I think Mrs. Kennedy would be very proud and pleased that we are the living legacy to her vision for historic preservation and maintaining the museum standard at the White House and also teaching and telling that story, educating Americans and people around the world about the history of that house. Each of you are dynamic, incredible leaders in your own space. You're leaders for the world, and I'll thank you for your contributions and your success, and look forward to continuing the upward trajectory of each of your careers and being a partner with you along the way. So thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it so much. Thanks. Thanks.